Hello and welcome to Alexport. It's only bloody coming home. Well, it's getting there at least. England are into the quarterfinals of Euro 2020 after an incredible 2 0 win over Germany that sent the nation absolutely wild. On Saturday, they face Ukraine with a place in the semi finals up for grabs. A lot of England's players were brilliant on Tuesday night. Luke Shaw was sensational, Sterling had a great game, Pickford made some excellent saves, Grealish was a game changer off the bench. There were so many great performances in England shirt at Wembley. But what would happen if all 26 England players disappeared? Well, there'd probably be a criminal investigation of some sort, maybe AC12 would be involved, but more importantly, who would actually be in the England squad? Well, using Football Manager 2021, I'm going to find out. I've deleted all 26 players from Gareth Southgate's squad from the game, meaning they'll have to find another crowd of players to bring it home. I'm going to see who he picks and see just how well they do at Euro 2020. Let's go! Oh, and before we start, a quick shout out and a big thank you to all the subscribers out there. We've made some great progress on this channel over the past couple of the months, so long may it continue. Thank you everyone, let's crack on! Right, here we are at the start of the simulation, the 11th of June 2021, the day Euro 2021 or Euro 2020 kicks off. And as you can see, here is the England homepage and it is all changed. Gareth Southgate's still the manager. There's no Harry Kane to be captain. Instead, that honour has gone to Eric Dyer. The vice captain, no longer Jordan Henderson. It's Ross Barkley. And the key player, it's not Sterling, it's not Foden, it's not Grealish, it's not Maguire. It is James Ward. Prowse, a man who was very unlucky to miss out on the squad this summer, he has, but with everyone deleted from the game, he's back in the mix, and he's England's best player apparently, which is a little bit of a stretch considering they've got Trent Alexander-Arnold, but whatever, we'll have a little look at the squad in a moment, just for a bit of clarity I'll show you that the other players don't exist, let's chuck Jack Grealish's name into the search bar, Jack Grealish. No results found, Raheem Sterling. See if anyone comes up for him. Not a soul. And what about the captain, Harry Kane? No results found. There you go, there's three players. I'm sure you can trust that the other 23 aren't there as well. All 26 men of Gareth Southgate's real life England squad have been deleted from Football Manager 2021. Meaning Gareth Southgate's got to pick a new 26 man squad and he's got to try and navigate the tricky waters of the European Championships. I've got the same groups, the, the normal groups, Croatia, Czech Republic, Scotland. It'll be the same group day as we had in reality that we came top of and have made it to the quarterfinals. Kind of surprisingly. Things have gone our way so far. Things are looking positive for England. But how positive will they look for this England team? Let's have a look at the squad. Now, even though we can't pick Jordan Pickford, Aaron Ramsdale or Sam Johnston, there's a big surprise for me in the goalkeeping selection. Obviously, Southgate's picked three goalkeepers. It's no surprise to see Nick Pope in there. I think he would have been in the squad had he been fit. But where is Dean Henderson? I mean, sometimes when you do these simulations, even when Pickford's there, Dean Henderson's the England number one. With England's three Euro 2020 goalkeepers deleted, Dean Henderson is still nowhere to be seen. I mean, he was originally at the tournament, replaced by Aaron Ramsdale late on. And the simulation, he still exists, he's still at Man United, he's only played once all season, seven in all competitions, and he hasn't been selected. Instead, Southgate's gone for Angus Gunn and Fraser Forster, two men nowhere near the England setup in reality, but somehow they are in the squad ahead of Dean Henderson. Elsewhere, let's have a look at the centre backs. We've got Michael Keane. Yeah, he was probably on the brink of making the provisional squad. Same for Fakayo Tomori. There was a lot of shouting for him, but I think. With him playing for AC Milan, a lot of us don't actually see how good Fakayo Tamuri is, so it wasn't really it wasn't really easy how to judge whether he should be in or not. Let's have a look elsewhere. Rob Holden never got close. Chris Smallen playing in Italy. Not a bad shout. Player that Gareth Southgate basically vowed he would never pick again, I believe, but in this simulation he hasn't had a choice. Other centre backs, Eric Dyer. A lot of people thought Eric Dyer would be in the squad. I wasn't surprised to see him not make it, but here he's only the bloody England captain. And they've also got Mason Holgate and Callum Chambers. So interestingly, there's no Ben Godfrey there who was in the provisional squad, but he hasn't made the New England squad. Right backs, Trent Alexander-Arnold, not a bad option to have considering he had to pull out the squad due to injury. He's playing defensive midfielder here, which is pretty interesting. The have got Aaron Wan-Bissaka, decent right back, loves a slide and tackle. Ryan Byrne at left back, James Justin, he can play on both sides. Another player who might have had a good chance of being in the squad had he not had a lengthy injury earlier in the season. 
In the midfield, James Ward Prowse listed as the key player, which is a big surprise. Mikel Antonio, he hasn't got a single England cap to his name, but after scoring 14 goals for West Ham in the Premier League this season, he's in the squad, could play on the right, could play up front. Elsewhere, Ross Barkley with the vice captain we know, Alex Oxley chamberlain a player who... He was a bit of an England regular for a, for a long time, but nowhere near nowadays. James Madison, a player a lot of people want to see in the England squad, just doesn't really seem like he's going to get a chance with how good Grealish and Ford and whatnot and Mount in a similar position. But here is James Madison's chance. He's had a decent season for Leicester in this simulation. He could be an important player at this Euros. Callum Hudson-Odoi, another player who had a few chances a couple of years ago for England. Not really had much of a chance lately. Delhi Ali back in the fold. And up front, we've got Tammy Abraham, Mason Greenwood, Ollie Watkins, Newcastle's Callum Wilson, and Danny Ings. You know what it is? That's not a bad squad at all, really. In terms of a best 11 there, I think that's pretty good. Let's have a look at the 11 they've got here currently. Angus Gunn in goal, wan right back, left back James Justin, Dyer and Tamori centre back, midfield three of Trent Alexander Arnold, Ross Bartley, and James Madison. And then a front three of Greenwood, Hudson Adoy, and Tammy Abraham. And the key player, James Ward Prowse, is on the bench. Maybe this team isn't going to be what starts against Scotland in the opening game for England, but we will see how they get on. I mean, obviously, it's nowhere near as good as the England squad that they've got in reality. The team that has got a really, really good chance of going all the way. But how good can this England team do? I'm going to simulate a couple of weeks into the future. Let's see how England get on in the group stages. Okay, here we are, the 24th of June, 2021. The group stages of Euro 2020 are over, and England have narrowly, narrowly, by the skin of the teeth, crept through the back door. They have made it, only just, into the second round. In reality, England came top of the group with seven points. They beat Czech Republic, they beat Croatia, they got a draw with Scotland. Top of the group, seven points to set up a second round tie against Germany, the runners-up of Group F. But here, England have gone through as one of the best placed third teams. They started the tournament with a 2-2 draw with Scotland. They threw away a 2-0 lead. They were flying in the first half. Barkley and Greenwood put England up. And then Shanklin and Nisbet with two goals in the final 10 minutes to give Scotland a point. And then four days later, things got even worse for England. They were beaten 2-1 by Croatia, the beaten 2018 World Cup finest. They won here at Wembley, a 2-1 win for Croatia, meaning England went into the final game against the Czech Republic, sitting bottom of the group with just a point. And their future was hanging in the balance. But fortunately, Tammy Abraham, with his second goal of the tournament, gave England a 1-0 win over Czech Republic. It put them onto four points put them below Croatia because of the head-to-head -head record and fortunately for them that was enough to put them through to the second round. Unfortunately though for England that means things are going to be very very tough. In the second round England will be facing France. The world champions, the team that in reality obviously beaten by Switzerland in the second round which was a massive massive shock but France have came top of their group seven points and they are going to be playing England in the second round. Kudos to Scotland, though, coming top of Group D. I mean, it was a pretty close group. Only two points separated Scotland in first and the Czech Republic in fourth. But it speaks volumes about how much England have struggled with this new squad. Let's have a look at the team, how they lined up for the first game against Scotland. It was the team we mentioned before. Big surprises, you know, you know, Deli Alley in the starting lineup, no James Ward Prowse. In the, sorry, there was a James Ward Prowse, sorry. I take it all back. James Ward Prowse, he started in place of James Madison, who ended up coming off the bench. The main man for England, Tammy Abraham with an 8.2 rating. It looks like he's been the best player for England. I mean, why isn't Nick Pope starting in goal? Angus Gunn started all three of England's games. I mean, no disrespect to Angus Gunn. I'm sure he's a lovely book. I'm sure he's just signed for Norwich again or Southampton or is he is he gone from Southampton to Norwich, I think. Either way, somehow he's the England number one here, despite spending a season in the championship. I mean a decent season in the championship, but a season in the championship nonetheless. Nick Pope, I mean, surely he should be the number one. But but seemingly he isn't. Let's have a look at the game two. James Madison came into the starting lineup. And in the third game, Trent dropped into right back allowing Oxlade Chamberlain to start. Barkley was back in the starting lineup ahead of James Madison. 
Tammy Abraham, yet again, one of their best players. Trent playing well there, but let's, if we'll have a little look at the squad here, I mean, Callum Wilson has barely featured, Holden Burton for his fourth stone, surprisingly. Mikel Antonio, he still hasn't made his debut. I mean, where is it going wrong for this England team? I mean, if you look at that back four, it doesn't fill you with a lot of confidence. Right back, the solid, Trent around wan -Bissaka. But the centre-backs, there are big question marks next to it, especially Eric Dyer. I mean, he's your captain. Gareth Southgate's going to have a real job in his hands to get past France here in the second round. But his, his real-life team did it against Germany. But can they do it against even greater opposition in France? If they can get past France here, they'll have equaled what England have done so far. But can they do it? Let's simulate another few more days into the future. Let's see how England get on in the second round. Right, here we are a few more days into the future. The second round is over. And so is the Euro 2020 dream for England. They were beaten 3-1 by France in the second round, meaning this three Lions reserve squad, can we call it? They are going home. Let's have a look at that game against France. They lost 3-1, but they did go ahead through Tammy Abraham, England, Got off to a wonderful start. After 13 minutes, Tammy Abraham getting his third goal of the tournament. He's been playing brilliantly. Probably the best player of this England reserve side. And then it all fell apart. Martial and Thomas Lamar with the goals for France. Pretty surprising that Martial's in the France squad, but whatever. They scored in Romania to put France through to the quarterfinals and send England home. I mean, Angus Gunn, they're still playing in goal for no apparent reason. And an average rating, well, a rating, sorry, of 5.7. Absolutely shot. And Callum Hudson, a doy poor on the left wing there. And it's ended in disappointment for Gareth Southgate, who, to his credit, he's, he's still got his job. So that, that's nice, nice for the minute. Had they made it to the quarterfinals, they'd have had a, a decent little tie against Austria, just like in reality. England have made it to the quarterfinals and it looks like they've got a great run, possibly, to the final. Obviously, possibly, you know, Ukraine could beat England. There's no doubt in that at all. They've got talented players, Zinchenko, Yarmolenko, Moranchuk and all them. But it's a great chance for England. If they'd done it here, they would have had just as good a chance. They would have had Austria in the quarterfinals. But sadly for Gareth Southgate and his New England squad, it's ended in disappointment. I mean, this is kind of a little bit what would have happened if the European Super League had happened and there was the talk that the England players players wouldn't have been allowed to play at a major tournament. A lot of those were playing for England. Your likes of Jordan Henderson, Harry Kane, Luke Shaw, Phil Foden, Raheem Sterling, all those players, they wouldn't have been eligible. England have had to pick a totally new 26-man squad here because of what I've done. I've eliminated every player from the game and this new 26-man England squad haven't been able to replicate the success of the squad in reality. They limped through the group stage, coming third, going through as one of the best placed third teams, which is not a place you want to be. It was a difficult ask, a big ask to get them through the second round, and it was one bridge too many. They were beaten by France, 3-1, and all this tells us is, Unsurprisingly, the England reserves are nowhere near as good as the actual England team. The actual England team who have got a great chance of bringing football home, finally. We will leave it there. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. As always, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to Expo. And until next time, we will see you around.